What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about some of my favorite functions in Fredo 6's new corner rounding extension, Fredo Corner. Um, before we get started, I wanna take a second to thank my newest supporters on Patreon. So big thank you to Philip Rudolph, Robert Morse, and Paul Hedges. Patreon, as most of you know, is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. One of the perks of being a supporter on Patreon is you get to vote on the extension that I cover every week. This week my patrons voted and they selected a new Fredo Corner tutorial for the video of the week. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to vote on the extension that I cover every week, um, maybe support the show, make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I made a video about this extension a while ago and then uh, it just kind of got lost in the shuffle with Basecamp and everything else. Now I wanted to go back and kind of revisit it a little bit because I think it's getting overlooked a little bit and it's a really great extension. So a lot of you have used round corner, Fredo 6's other extension for rounding off corners before. But Fredo corner is superior in a few different ways. And so what I wanted to do is talk about some of my favorite things about this extension. So the first thing I want to talk about is just the ability to use this on group geometry. Because uh, in the past, you weren't able to use this on group, or you weren't able to use round corner, which was the original corner rounding extension from Fredo. Um, so if I load up round corner, You can see how I could come in here and I could round off the edges for this box, no problem, because it's not group geometry. But if I came in and tried to do the same thing with round corner before, you couldn't do that. So on the other hand, with Fredo corner, you can use this on group geometry. So I could come in here even though this is grouped and I could just select the whole thing just by double clicking. I could set my radius or whatever I want my rounding to be and I could just click and you can just round everything off without having to worry about that. So it doesn't matter if stuff is grouped or not grouped anymore. And so that's one of my favorite things about this and we're going to talk about components in a minute but just the ability to work with that geometry is a huge time saver and so now I want to talk a little bit about being able to adjust the corners and so one of the things I really like about this extension is you can adjust the way the corners are handled in here so if you remember with round corner there was only kind of one way for corners to work so there were only really a couple different ways the corners could work. So you could set your offset and then depending on if you uh, selected round or sharp or bevel, that's how the corners would get handled. And that was just the way that the geometry was created in here. And if you looked at the hidden geometry, this wasn't really symmetrical or anything like that. However, with the uh, Fredo corner, you can actually come in here and you can adjust the way that the corners are treated. So um, all you have to do is just go in here and click on this button right here that says circle. And what this does is this allows you to set the profile of the rounding. So you can set it to bevel your corners if you want to. You can set it to do a symmetrical circle. And so that's one thing I really like is if I was just to select this and then run this, this actually now creates a symmetrical circular corner. So you can see how where over here, if we look at our hidden geometry, this wasn't really symmetrical. It just kind of came off of one of these edges. Within Fredo corner, this is actually a symmetrical circle. And so this is a great time to talk about another feature that I really like here, which is the undo function or the, so the undo or repair function. And so what this allows you to do is this actually allows you to select something that's been changed with the extension and actually either undo the change or edit the change. So in this case, I can click on edit and then I can go back and select one of these other corner types. So you can see how I can come in here and I can kind of adjust these different corner types, as well as the number of segments that are generated in here. So this is really powerful for allowing you control over what's created. So you can see how that allowed me to change this. And then I could actually come in here while this is still active and make this change as well. So if I wanted to use like this corner, for example, I could select that and run that and you can see how the corner actually adjusts outward based on that new setting. So again, if I wanted to change that, I would just click on the uh, undo or repair. I would click on this and I would just go in and click edit. And I would just set this in here as whatever I wanted that to be. So you can see how you can still set this to bevel or round, whatever you want it to do to the corners, you can adjust that still. 
So another thing I really like about this tool is preview mode. And so what preview mode does is it allows you to live preview the changes that you're making. So let's say I have an object like this one and I wanna go in and round off my corners. Well, if I click on this, I can actually click on the button for toggle preview. And what that's gonna do is that's actually gonna preview what your geometry is gonna look like. And what that allows me to do is click and drag on the left and right hand side. And I can actually click and drag this up and down to adjust how strong the rounding is gonna be in real time. So I can actually see what this rounding is gonna look like um, inside of preview mode. So I really love being able to look at this and tell if, um, if the dimension that I've set is too wide or too narrow and uh, be able to make this change really easily. So I really do like preview mode and what that allows you to do. And then once I'm done, I can just click out here and it'll just round my object off. So the next function that I really like is the ability to adjust components as well as groups. So um, remember we talked about being able to adjust group geometry before? Well, these objects are all copies of the same component, meaning they're all linked. Well, since we can adjust group geometry, that means I can actually come in here and I can make the adjustment. And let's say that we wanted to come in here and just uh, bevel these. So, and I was to activate this in preview mode, you're gonna notice that as I adjust the bevel, since these are components, not only is the first one getting adjusted, the other two are as well, because they're all copies of that same component. But now because you can uh, actually change the group geometry inside a Fredo corner, um, you can do that live, but you can see how you can actually make that component adjustment now, which I'm a big fan of. And then the last mode I wanna talk about just a little bit, I think, it's, I think it gets a little bit, um, I think it gets a little bit lost in the shuffle, but the ability to subdivide objects. So if you've ever used an extension like sub D, you know that what that does is that comes in here and that subdivides an object. So it's really good for creating like, um, for like organic shapes. Well, what Fredo Corner allows you to do is that it actually has a function in here for subdividing faces. And so if you click on this, you can actually subdivide your faces um, into quad geometry. So you can see how, like for example, this is splitting this up into quads. And so now, if I was to come in here and I was to round this off, you can see how I can use that subdivision to make this a much more subtle rounded shape. So you can use this to, uh, and if you've ever done any quad modeling, you know how much of a pain it can be to have to come in here and split something up into quads like this. And probably a better example would be this object right here. Um, because right now, if you were to take this and subdivide it, You can see how your geometry starts getting really odd at the top because this isn't a quad base shape, meaning these aren't split up into four-sided um, shapes. But if you click on this right here and then you click on prepare mesh for subdivision, what this will allow you to do is that'll allow you to subdivide this shape. So you can see how when it splits this geometry up, it splits all of these up into four-sided shapes like quads. Well now, if you come in here with an extension like sub D, you can see how you get a much smoother rounded shape when it subdivides it. You can use this to subdivide your geometry into quads to prepare it for division with an extension like sub D. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Do you have anything about this extension that you're really liking or that you're using it for? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.